All right, guys, usually I'm blowing something up with nitrous and saying something stupid. We all get a good laugh, but I think this video, I'm going to take a different approach, show you how smart I am, talk about the differences between your standard style steel chainsaw, M-Tronic, and EFI saws. What makes them tick, what the difference is between them, the myths, the misconceptions, the rumors, the facts, and I just lost all of you, didn't I? I knew I should have stuck to nitrous. All right, guys, what do we think? Is this a bad idea, a good idea? Uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to see how this video does. I am a certified tech. Let's just get that out of the way. And not that certifications are worth the paper they're written on. Uh, some of the best mechanics I know are not certified mechanics. And some of the most certified mechanics I know are the worst mechanics. So the paper doesn't, doesn't mean anything. But the experience and the reputation does. And I've been around. I've been wrenching for many years. So I do know what I'm talking about. The steel saws are my specialty. I would say the 500i especially. Uh, I'm really familiar with it. I've built over 100 of them. And as far as servicing chainsaws, I couldn't even begin to imagine how many I've, I've serviced. So uh, I'm not some Joe Schmo that is just going to, you know, talk for the sake of talking. I am going to also tell you when I'm not exactly sure how stuff works, uh, especially with the 500i. I have done more to these saws than anybody I know. I have pushed the 500i to the point that it ran backwards. That is no joke. That's that's not me trying to be funny. It literally ran backwards. Uh, if anybody's done that, high five. I feel uh, I feel your pain. Uh, the funny thing was, it ran great, and I started it with the recoil, so it spun the right way. It spun the crank the right way, but the saw ran backwards, and it ran well. Uh, if you wouldn't have put a bar and chain on it, you wouldn't have known that it was running backwards. As crazy as it sounds. So there you go. Uh, I've tried all kinds of stuff to them. I currently do have a successful hybrid build. We're going to talk about that, which is a 660 piston. I've already, uh, I've already kind of let the cat out of the bag on that one, but we'll get a 660 piston next to the 500i piston. It kind of explained why I do it. And we're going to talk about the misconceptions on this. Uh, and I still, to this day, hear all kinds of wild claims on these 500 eyes from some reputable saw builders and i'm not here to throw anybody under the bus i think a lot of it is you know i've said this from the beginning there's a lot of you know rinse and repeat guys in this in this business and on youtube and i try to stay as far away from that as i can i don't like when everybody's saying the same thing everybody's doing the same build everybody just thinks something is fact because they hear their favorite saw builder say it. So what I tell you is what I know from my experience. And that's that. Um, it, nothing that, it, I don't relay anything that I read out of books, put it that way. Um, or hear from other people. This is all stuff that I have experienced with my own two eyes, hands, and it's happened right in front of my face. And you, that's the best way to learn. Um, but let's get into it. Okay, so let's start off with the conventional single magnet flywheel, standard fuel delivery, uh, a carburetor with your carb settings, your low and your high, mechanical idle, and this is about as basic as it gets. This is pretty much all your, your saws before P and C, your points and condensers. It's going to have your ignition module, and just to get the bare basics out of the way, Flywheel, ignition module, carburetor, and this is a carburetor that's taken apart. We're going to talk about that. And same thing here, flywheel, ignition module, carburetor, but this carburetor is for the M-Tronic, and it's going to have an electronic fuel solenoid in it, and we're going to have a M-Tronic carb tore apart. And for the, the 500i, this is where it gets a little different. We'll talk about this more in depth, but instead of a carburetor, we have a throttle body. For the flywheel, we have a stator type flywheel, which is going to have the magnet on the inside versus two magnets for the M-Tronic that are opposite on the outside and single magnet on the outside for your standard uh, fuel delivery and ignition. And also for the 500i, we have a stator that goes behind the flywheel that's going to provide electricity 
power your ECU. We're gonna have a fuel pump slash primer and a fuel injector. But let's get into the 500i in a little bit and we'll start with your bare bones basic. This is gonna be your 044 to 461, 660, all those saws uh, before your Mtronic. And the way that this is gonna work, your flywheel is connected to your crankshaft. Crankshaft spins, you have one magnet that is going to spin and pick up on your coil. And I just realized I should probably get the cutaway for this. Once. All right, we have the cutaway out. If you wanna see my ridiculous uh, attempt at explaining two-stroke engine theory, you can go check that video out. I do have some really nice artwork going on here. But uh, the conventional saw with no Mtronic, no fancy electronics on it is going to work Basically like this, you have a flywheel that is fixed to the crankshaft. It spins with the crankshaft. It has one magnet. So this is gonna have one single magnet and it is going to provide spark when the magnet crosses the legs on the ignition coil, okay? So you're, you're basically providing your air fuel mixture through your carb and you're adjusting it with your, this one's missing a screw actually, but uh, these are all just junk carbs, but Anyway, you have your low and your high uh, adjustments on your carburetor, your mechanical idle. I call this a mechanical idle because it just basically has a tapered end that pushes on your linkage for your throttle, and it's just going to prop that butterfly valve open a little bit. So that's how you're adjusting your, your fuel delivery, and that is done mechanically with you know a screwdriver. You turn these. If you want more fuel on your low end, you... You go to the left, lefty loosey. If you want to lean it out, you go to the right. So you're shutting off the fuel going to the right, opening up the fuel going to the left, and you're adjusting your mechanical idle here. Okay? So pretty basic setup. You are going to have four positions on your selector switch. So when you go to start the saw, you're going to have start or choke. Your first position, that is going to shut this outside butterfly valve, uh, restricting the air. You're going to inherently get more fuel that way. That's what you're choking the saw. Uh, some of them have primers, we're not going to get into that, but then your second position is going to open this choke up, prop open this back butterfly valve a little bit, and then I call that high idle. And then your third position is just straight up run, and then stop. And that's how the your standard saw works. And your carburetor is going to have a metering. This would be your metering side of your carburetor. It has your metering arm, or uh, metering lever, your uh, focus, your needle, uh, you're going to have a spring in there, metering diaphragm, gasket, so that's your metering side of your carburetor. Your fuel pump side is going to be run off of, so okay, so you'll have to forgive me, I have uh, ADHD uh, for real, I, a lot of people say that, but they're, they're kidding, I actually have ADHD, so it's, it's hard for me to kind of, to stay on track, so I kind of get all over the place, but you'll have to bear with me. So every one of these saws that you see up here, and this is a misconception with the 500i, they're all ran off of impulse uh, impulse hose and crankcase pressure, negative and positive pressure in your bottom end crankcase. The 500i does not have an electronic fuel pump. The fuel delivery is electronic, but the electronics are only operating the solenoid or uh, the fuel injector. The Mtronic, it's operating the fuel solenoid and the only electronics you would have on a the older styles like the 044 or 461 would be if you had a heated handle um but even the 500i which we'll get into is still ran your pressure is initially uh started with your fuel pump slash primer but it's ran off of impulse holes it's ran off of crankcase pressure same with the old school saws same with the mtronic but anyway your fuel pump diaphragm is going to, we're not gonna get into that in this video either, but just know that you have a fuel pump diaphragm, you're running it off crankcase pressure, and you have your metering side, which we're, I'm gonna tie all this in, don't worry, you're probably like, why are you explaining this? Okay, so that is your standard saw. Your Mtronic saw, you are going to have the same setup, except for you are going to have two magnets on the flywheel, okay? 
your first magnet is basically just picking up the information for the brain box. And no, I do not understand how their software works. I understand the gist of it, but no, I do not. I'm not a, a computer code guy. I, I, I can't get into the parameters and even pretend that I understand how that works. But the long and short of it is your first magnet is going to pick up your readout and it's going to tell the brain box of it how much uh, fuel to deliver for for your your next ignition stroke or power stroke. So that is operated through the, the brain box, the coil, and also a, where did I, I had one up here, here it is, a fuel solenoid. So on the Mtronic saws, you have an electronic fuel solenoid. So this is gonna have power going to it. And it is going to open and shut this little tiny fuel solenoid. And instead of a low and high end, see right there, you'd have on your on this carburetor, you're gonna have a low and high adjustment with your screws right there. And you're gonna adjust that you know, by hand with a screwdriver. And here, that is controlled by the brain box, which is going to give you the adequate fuel that you need through uh, your low and high basically that's controlled by the fuel solenoid. So there is no low and or high adjustment, but there is a mechanical idle adjustment. A lot of people don't know this on the Mtronic saws. There is, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but there is a little tiny screw down here. You see right where my light is shining. Just trust me, there is. There is a screw down there that you can adjust that will actually uh, act the same as your adjustment here, your mechanical idle, and you can adjust that in and out, and it's gonna it's gonna allow the saw to, you know, get more air or, or less air at, at idle. So a lot of people don't know that about the Mtronic saws. Also, the coils are different. Uh, they, there's obviously they're more sophisticated, and they're gonna run to this this switch up here, and when you have your Mtronic saws in the start position. It is going to push on this switch and it's going to give it a different set of parameters for start. And that's how you can reset your Mtronic saws, calibrate it. You know, if everybody, if you ever heard of somebody doing a reset or if you've done a reset, uh, or you can just start your Mtronic saw in the start position and let it run. Where a conventional saw, if you're in the start position, the, the first position, it won't run like that unless there's something wrong with it. Uh, you're going to get it to pop off, and then you're going to put it in your, your high idle position. The Mtronic saws will will run in the start position, and that's because this switch is triggered, and it's it's giving it a different set of parameters to run on. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, no high and low adjustment. Two magnets on the flywheel. Still ran off crate case pressure. Still ran with a metering and fuel pump side on your carburetor. Still has a mechanical idle adjustment, but your high and low adjustments and your fuel delivery through the RPM range is, is calibrated electronically. And it's actually really amazing how, how fast it can keep up. So that is happening faster than you can even think about if, if you really think about it. So there are advantages to both. Uh, the Mtronic saws are also only gonna have three positions where you're gonna have on your conventional saws, you're gonna have start, high idle, run and off in the Mtronic size, you're only going to have start, run and off. So hope that makes sense. Uh, again, ADHD, I'm trying, but let's get on to what everybody's here for, the 500i. All right, guys. Well, this is where I'll probably get myself into trouble. I'm going to say right off the bat, I'm going to say some things that uh, you're not going to find on any literature from steel. I'm going to explain some of the parts that are in this saw that steel basically does not acknowledge exist. I'm not sure why they do or don't. Um, and if you think you're going to come here to just try to slip me up and say, oh, he called this uh, a ECU when it's an ECM or this, that, I'm not that guy. I'm, I'm not the tech geek. I'm not the kind of guy that is going to tell you uh, how the software works, any of that. I'm going to tell you what I've experienced and what I know firsthand. And we're just going to talk about it because it's kind of strange to me that steel doesn't really acknowledge that some of these parts exist. 
Let's just start off with this. Go ahead and look up a crank angle sensor or a crank position sensor for a 500i and tell me what you come up with. Even if you have EBIS, uh, it's going to tell you to call your territorial rep. Uh, if you're not a certified tech, you're basically not going to be able to get the part. Um, you're going to have to go to a steel dealer. They're going to ask you all kinds of questions. Your, your control unit, your ECU, uh, that's another part that you, you have to call your rep for. Fuel injector, you have to call your rep for that. Um, the fact that a lot of people don't even know that it actually has a crank position sensor uh, is kind of strange. Steel doesn't acknowledge this part in their, basically in their little descriptions or videos for, if anybody has seen the video for when the 500i first came out where they got their diagram of their, you know, you pull the rope and that spins your flywheel that measures your barometric pressure and through wizardry it goes to your control box and provides spark and operates your injector. Uh, there is a lot being done in this in this brain box. I'm just going to call it a brain box because there's a lot of arguments of what it actually is. Is it a CDI, a ECU? Uh, trust me, guys. I've tried it all. Uh, I've tried these. I got, I've tried all this stuff. Here's a piggyback uh, module. Here's a piggyback CDI, uh, AC. There's DC. I got a whole bunch of them. I've tried them all. Uh, I've, I've screwed around with timing uh, to the point where the saw ran backwards. People that are saying they're advancing timing by shaving the flywheel keyway, they are, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, technically, for a CDI system, which is basically what this is, you would have to actually move this crank position sensor. So this sensor right here that steel doesn't acknowledge sits down in your crankcase right here, and the sensor right here peeks through this window, which is going to pick up on the counterweight on your crankshaft, see that going by there? So it's gonna pick up on that counterweight and it's gonna, it's basically gonna tell the the sensor in the brain box where where the saw is at. Top dead center, bottom dead center, all that. It's gonna measure RPMs. Steel listed as a, a pressure sensor or a, what the hell do they call it? A barometric pressure sensor. Um, there's no throttle position sensor on this saw at all. It is just a throttle body. That's it. There's no uh, adjustment for your, even a mechanical standstill idle. The only adjustment you would have is if you messed with the pilot hole in the butterfly valve. The fuel injector is ran off of crankcase pressure through an impulse line. There is no pump. I think I mentioned that before. Also, your primer slash fuel pump is basically like a carburetor with no venturi. This is another one that people, a lot of people don't know. So this is a fuel pump slash primer out of a TS 500 i but it's the same thing. Here is your fuel pump side. Here is your fuel pump diaphragm. Same as a, a carburetor. Here is your metering diaphragm gasket. Here is your metering lever, needle, all the same stuff that you have in a carburetor except for no venturi. You basically don't have the hole through the middle. When you start the saw, you are going to prime it. That's gonna provide pressure. You have three lines going to this pump primer. We're gonna call it a primer. You have your impulse hose, a pickup, and a return line. That's gonna run through your injector. So when you prime this thing, that's why you're gonna to wanna to prime them a good six, seven times when you cold start it to make sure that you get this whole system pressurized and it's gonna provide fuel to the injector, pressurize the system, and then when you you start the saw, it's going to turn your flywheel, and then it's basically through your, your crank angle sensor. Uh, where did that thing go? How did I lose it? Are you serious? There it is. <laughs> Jesus. I'm trying to look through the phone. Uh, so that's going to tell you basically where your timing is, and that's how it's going to map out the timing. So your... Your ignition timing and all that is going to change. That's what, another reason why this advancing timing is, is not a good idea. Um, I've, I've tested this stuff. I, I know people used to say, and a lot of people don't say it anymore. I used to hear all the time that on a 500i, the thing to do was advance the timing and open up the muffler, this, that, and the other. And now people don't say that anymore. I think people have realized that it actually doesn't do anything. 
you can advance the timing all you want. It's not going to do anything. Um, the, the way that this system works that I've gathered, and this is just, again, with experience, is it is running off of a crank angle sensor. The only way you're going to advance timing is to run one of these things, a piggyback uh, module, ECU, CDI. And when you try to do that, this brain box is is pretty damn smart, guys. If you put it, put it this way, most saws, you can disconnect your stop switch, right? Which let's just say this is just a stop switch. That's all it is. There's no choke. There's no uh, run. There's no nothing. It's, it's either primer, start, stop. That's it. There's no selector switch, uh, nothing like that. But if you unplug this, the saw will not get spark. On a conventional saw, if you disconnect the wires that go to your coil, the saw is still going to run. You just won't be able to shut it off. None of this stuff you can disconnect. Obviously, you cannot disconnect any of the other uh, wiring harnesses when the saw is running. But it's kind of interesting that you can't disconnect this. I've even tried to just jump it. Like, you know what I mean? Make a jumper. You can't do that. Um, here's uh, some more misconceptions about this saw. Uh, we mentioned there's no fuel pump, uh, electronic fuel pump. There is no throttle position sensor. There... Okay, so this is another one you'll hear people say all the time. They want to raise the rev limiter. They want to get rid of the rev limiter on a 500i. You're not hitting a rev limiter no matter what you do to the porting. Trust me. Um, what you're doing, you're, you're hitting more of what I would call a governor where the saw is tuning itself rich. I promise you guys, you're, you're force stroking the saw. You are not hitting a rev limiter. That's why you can take 10 500i's, whether they're ported, whether they're stock, tack them all, and you're going to get a different number damn near on every single one of them. Um, I've hooked 500 eyes up to the MDG software, and the hard limit is 15,000 RPMs is what I've seen. I've, I've seen them where their max RPMs that they've hit is 15,000. Uh, I've put a 50 shot of nitrous on a 500 eye, and the fuel delivery was adequate. The fuel injector, the, the mapping system was adequate for a 50 shot of nitrous, so you're not porting a saw, you're not porting a 500i to the point of you need more fuel. So these people that are drilling out fuel injectors or orifices and all this stuff, not necessary. Um, the They run a low intake. Uh, we're going to talk about the, the hybrid build I do and why I do it, but uh, that's just another misconception. You're not hitting a rev limiter. You don't need to raise the rev limit. You don't need to increase the injector, put a new injector in it. You don't need to do any of that stuff. The only thing that you could do uh, is to piggyback one of these these boxes off of it or just send the ECU in and get like, if you're into, you know, basically flashing ECUs or running chips, that is what I've determined. And I've sent these things off to people. Uh, trust me, I've, I've tried all of this stuff. I've even tried running a potentiometer to where I'm changing the values uh, via a tone pot, basically, and trying to change the values for setting the parameters and giving it, quote unquote, more fuel or less fuel, just having an adjustable fuel delivery. And I'm not going to say it didn't work, but I don't understand the, the values that I need to start with. And they change so much. It's very hard to figure this brain box out. It's very hard. And... I'm not smart enough to do it. Um, the the spark, the fuel delivery, and all that stuff is is mapped the entire time this thing is running. That's why they accelerate so fast. That's why they run so good. Um, it's also another reason why you don't want to just shut a 500i off when you're at full chap. You've just been beating the hell out of it, and just shut it off when it's at basically mound tight. Uh, that's what gives people the hot start issues. I've pretty much uh, come to the conclusion that that's what the issue is. Just let it idle for a little bit. Let that let the saw calibrate itself for idle a little bit, and then it'll start. It'll it'll hot start a lot better. Don't use the decomp. Here's another thing with the 500 eyes. They run low compression. Stock off the shelf. They run a lot lower compression than most saws. They're at like 135, 140. Uh, if you don't believe me, take a compression on the new one off the shelf. Um, they feel like they have more compression than they do because this magnet 
and stator is so strong. That's why I have a video where I took a 500i and I swung it around like a yo-yo and I bet somebody $5,000 and I won. They never paid me. That's mostly, uh, it was a built saw, so I did bump the compression up, but it's also because of the resistance from that magnet and, and coil uh, stator. So there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on in these saws. A lot that steel doesn't want to talk about, which is really weird. Uh, I don't understand why they, they're so secretive about it. It's not like Husqvarna or Echo or any of these companies don't have people that are a hundred times smarter than me that would just take this saw apart and figure it out. So I, I don't know why they are secretive about it. It's really weird. Um, let's talk about the, uh, I could talk about these things all day long, but let's talk about the, the hybrid build and, and why I do it and why it runs so good. Well, if you guys are still with me, you are some hardcore either fans or you're really desperate to hear what I have to say about these 500 eyes. So, uh, I appreciate it either way. Um, the hybrid build, I've already let the cat out of the bag on this. It's a 660 piston, same millimeter. Here's a, this is a 660 piston, 500 eye piston, both 54 millimeter, both fit in a cylinder. So why did I, why did I start with this build? Um, first off, I did have a 500 I like I had one when they were not out in the U S uh, mine, mine was from Greece, uh, it basically smuggled over. Don't tell anybody. Um, and you know, I had to have one and I was sick of waiting for them to come out in the U S. So I did get kind of a jump start on them and I was real secretive about the builds I was doing at first on them. Um, the one thing I noticed right off the bat was they have a really low intake. So their intake port timing is very low. And a lot of times, uh, you know, pretty much every build that anybody's doing that is, is worth their weight, basically we can say is they're dropping the jug, they're dropping the cylinder because they're decking the cylinder, they're increasing the compression and your, your intake is going to get even lower. The more you lower your cylinder, your intake port timing is going to get even lower yet. So you're looking at your, you're around the nineties for your intake timing. Now, a lot of these pistons from steel, uh, this would be your intake side. These pistons are all over the map. They are terrible pistons. I'm going to say that right off the bat. I, I have never shied from this. They need to fix these damn pistons. They, the saws obviously do like a low intake timing, but I've had a difference. I always measure from the bottom of the bottom ring to the lowest point of the, the skirt on the intake side, which is going to determine your intake timing. And I've had a difference of almost 37,000, 36, 37 thousandths. That's over three degrees. Why are they all over the damn map? This one is actually really short. And look how crooked it is. That's crooked. The bottom of the skirt. Uh, same with the exhaust side. It's crooked. It's all over the place. Uh, they're just bad pistons. They, you'd think that steel on this saw especially would do a better job casting their pistons. So I wanted to find a, a way to have more control over intake timing. So here we go. This is a 660 piston. Let's just, let's just do this. And this is kind of how I started to, I'm holding my phone. I should have put it in a tripod or something. This is kind of, I was talking with another guy on this too, and we were kind of just going over this back and forth and thinking like, you know, what could a guy do about this? So I shouldn't have done this. Uh, one way to, if you're going to do a piston swap, one way to, to start with it is use the wrist pin again, you'll have to forgive me. I might have to cut camera to do this. Oh, maybe I am that talented. Uh, the wrist pin does fit both saws. Struggle bus much. Okay. There we go. So you, the, what I do and all that, I'm going to explain some of the stuff I do, but I'm not going to give away everything. Uh, it's just the way it is. You know, I can't just give away my, my secret build here. Um, first off, Let's just hear some of these hybrids that I've built cutting. You're going to hear a way different sound out of these saws. So here's some, here's a montage of the, the 660 pistons in the, in the 500 eyes, the hybrids. Check this out. <laughs>
there you go. I can clearly hear it. They're a way different sound. There's one other guy that I think might be doing this, and uh, it's Jack Beeler, Hot Sauce 101. I think he's doing a hybrid 500i, to be honest, because I can hear it in his, and he's the only other one that I've ever heard it. Um, I also do a windowed piston where I'm cutting windows in the 500i piston, but I'm also doing some other stuff. Again, if you just go to throw a go throw a 660 piston in a 500i, good luck. There, there's a lot you need to do. But the long and short of it, uh, you're going to need to use the wrist pin out of the 660 or shorten the wrist pin for the 500i because it's too wide. You won't be able to get your circlips in. Also, if you take the bearing out, this is all stuff like I'm not really giving much away because this is stuff you're going to find out if you try this yourself. Um, you see how that the needle cage bearing fits in there? doesn't fit in there, so you're going to have to figure that out. Uh, how I do that is my secret, but you're going to have to figure that out. Um, but when you set them like this and you have your wrist pin going through both, this is going to give you kind of a, a preview of what you're in for. Obviously, same bore. So look how much longer the skirt is on the 660. Uh, granted, you can cut some off of this. You, you can manipulate these pistons, you can machine them. You, you guys know I do dome pistons, I machine pistons. So you're, you're higher on your, your top. I call this the corner of the piston. You're higher on the top. You have a narrower skirt, so you gotta be damn careful. Uh, put it this way, you are barely wide enough for your intake and exhaust. So just a word of advice, I would not widen your intake or your exhaust if you do this build. Um, but you're longer on your skirt, and you can do some creative machining because you're taller. Uh, also, it's a windowed piston. That I'm definitely not going to give away, but I'm doing some different porting to utilize the windows. So, you know, I don't know how much of this I want to give away, but, but that's the build. That's the hybrid build. They're obviously really rowdy. They're, they're working really well. Uh, even the windowed piston 500i builds that I'm doing are working really well. But even some of those... Uh, when I get a 500i, I tell everybody, it's not a guarantee that I'm going to be able to do the build without ordering a piston. Some of the pistons, the skirts are just too short on the intake side where I don't feel comfortable doing my build and I have to get a new piston. And even then, it's not a guarantee because you might get another one that the skirt's too short. It's a big problem. I wish that Wiseco would make a piston or Steel would just fix it, do something. I mean, this is ridiculous. But that's probably enough said on that. Um, that's that's why I'm doing the hybrid build. That's why I do it. So other than that, I'm sure I missed stuff. I'm sure I misexplained stuff. I'm sure I slipped up here and there. But you know what? I'm not that guy. I'm just telling you through my experience what I've seen with my own two eyes. And man, was, this was probably the most boring video ever. But maybe you learned something. Maybe you didn't. I don't know, guys. Till next time, stay rowdy. Jesus, I need to go blow something up with nitrous now. This is too much technical jargon for me. I'll see ya.